Hi everybody, how are you today? You can see that I'm in a different location. I'm in a relatively modern but traditionally built house. And today I'm here because I want to talk to you about a report that we highlighted in an article on the oldish yesterday. So that's the oldish.com. And it is a report called Canadian Perspectives on the Financial Realities of Aging in Place. Big title, but in a very important topic. It was produced by the National Institute on Aging together with Home Equity Bank. Now, Home Equity Bank is something that I'm going to be mentioning later on uh, in this discussion because they uh, provide reverse mortgages. They're not the only institution that provides reverse mortgages, however. So that's a little bit of a disclaimer that they participated in this survey. However, you know, the whole discussion about aging in place and the financial realities of it is ever so important. Um, in 2018, a survey was done that indicated that 30% of working age Canadians have absolutely no retirement savings at all. None. Now, for those of you who are outside of Canada, you will need to know that we do have CPP, that's our Canadian pension plan. However, the CPP was never intended to provide the sort of income that a person would need in retirement to fully fund their life. It was meant to augment savings that we were all expected to accumulate as we worked and as we aged. In that same survey, 19% of people have less than $50,000 saved. So, you know, th this is something that is a real problem for uh, anybody who is looking ahead, certainly in the short term, but also in the middle term to what their retirement might look like and where they might live and how they might live. Um, the 2021 survey that was done by the National Institute on Aging, so bear in mind, this is deep into the pandemic. So people's perspectives were certainly colored by that, but that indicated that we really want to be able to stay in our homes for as long as we possibly can. 51% of Canadians 70 years of age and older were strongly considering how they might remain in their own homes as opposed to what they might see as an option of long-term care. And you know, I think in decades gone by, not even years gone by, but in decades gone by, it was just assumed that we would live in our homes until we really couldn't manage anymore. And then we would move into a long-term care facility of some sort. And that's where we would live out our days in that sort of a community. Well, you know, in cities, I suppose they are building more long-term care facilities. In more rural areas, not so much. There really are not enough beds to provide a long-term care bed for everybody. And our aging population, as we all know, is growing by the day. The cost of maintaining somebody, a person, in a long-term care bed is estimated by the Ontario Ministry of Health to be roughly $200 a day. Now, that of course depends on the type of room you have. Is it private, semi-private? Um, what amenities do you have? Where is it located? You know, if it's in a city, it might be more expensive than if it's way up north someplace in one of the provinces, but $200 a day is the estimate. Let's use that as the estimate. On a monthly basis, that works out to roughly $6,000 a month. $6,000 a month. That is a lot of money. Do you think you could stay in your own home for less than $6,000 a month? Well, 
I think you probably could. You know, if you're living in a house that you've already paid for, let's hope you've paid the mortgage, it's already paid for, um, and you're in a neighborhood that you love, you know where the shopping center is, how to get to the drugstore, how to get to your social activities, your doctor and so forth, that's all very familiar to you because you've lived there for years, decades maybe. Perhaps you've raised your family there and you'd like to stay there. I think you can do it for less than $6,000 a month. So let's look at those costs. The data suggests that private in-home care services can cost between $1,000 to $3,500 a month. Although it's fair to note that people with very high needs who need constant care can see those costs run up as high as $25,000 a month. So that's really a separate category of individual needing those kinds of services. For the most of us, that $1,000 to $3,500 range is something that's pretty normal. Against the $6,000 a month cost of a long-term care facility, you betcha. Now, let's, let's be real. A lot of in-home care and support services are provided by unpaid help. Let's just acknowledge that right off the bat. Often the help is provided by our adult children at a huge cost to them. Now we've talked about this before on the show. Our adult children, depending on where they are in their lives, they could be raising families, holding down full-time jobs, they could be disengaging from their social activities because they are spending more time looking after us. That's a very real cost to them. Um, you know, let's also acknowledge the cost to their health. They are running us around from place to place. They are lifting people on and off toilets, in and out of chairs and beds. This is a cost to their own health. It is not uncommon for the people providing care to pass away before the people to whom they are providing care. Now, the people providing care might not be your adult children. It might be your spouse, your partner there is a cost to them as well. They do it out of love, but I believe that we should be as proactive as possible in maintaining our own independence for as long as possible. And I think if you look at the costs that I've given you today, you will understand the reality of those costs against your personal finances. I don't know your personal finances, so, you know, I've given you the averages. You can figure that out for yourself. But is it possible to put those costs off, to forestall having to pay for in-home care services, to forestall putting the burden of care on our partner or our adult children? Well, yes. In many cases, there is a way to do that. Um, you know, you need to look at the cost of renovating or modifying your own home. Let me back up just a bit because there are people who are listening to this who are outside of Canada. I know we have listeners in the UK and in the States. And I want to be clear that when we're talking healthcare costs, your healthcare costs are going to be different than the healthcare costs a Canadian would bear. We have universal healthcare here, which means that when I go to the doctor, I don't pay anything out of pocket. If I need an x-ray or a CT scan, I don't pay anything out of pocket. It's paid for. 
taken care of. And our government is also working on um, universal dental care and universal pharma coverage. Uh, that is something that is relatively new and based on a deal that the federal government has made with the um, another party to make them stronger. So it's in Canada, it's the Liberals and the NDP. They've made this deal and the NDP has insisted on uh, universal dental care and universal pharma care to be included in the Liberal budget. And so that is an obligation now that the government has to bring that forward to keep their, it's not really a coalition, but it, to keep their agreement strong. Okay, so now let's, we can set aside the cost of healthcare. We can, you can't if you're in the States or the UK or France, you can't set that aside. You have to factor that into what you were doing. All right, now, Let's let's go back and look at our houses. I said before, and I will repeat this for those who may not have heard it, that we haven't changed basic home design since the 50s. We're still living in houses that function the same way they have for decades, decades. And that's not really very good for us. Electrical outlets are too low. Light switches are too high kitchen counters. Now this is where I am now. You see behind me, uh, let me just put this up so I can see. You can see that behind me I have, whoops, other way, I have an island that is one level. I have, you see these cupboards up here? Way high. These cupboards over here I would not be able to reach without getting on a step stool. These cupboards down here, um, they're deep. They're deep cupboards, not um, not the kind of cupboard that I could easily get to the things at the back without getting on my hands and knees and, and almost crawling into the cupboard. So, I mean, it's a beautiful home. Um, the, the dishwasher over here, we don't need to install dishwashers on the floor and yet we still do. They can be installed six or eight inches off the floor, which means we don't have to bend so far, but we tend to do that without even thinking about it. We just do all of these things without even thinking. You can see, um, you can see, whoops, get my hands right. These light switches here, they could be down about six inches lower. Why would you do that? Well, because if you end up in a wheelchair, you want to be able to reach the light switchers and you can't see it but on the opposite whoops, on the opposite side of that hallway on this wall just around that corner is a thermostat and it's the same thing it could be installed lower than it actually is so that everybody who has to use this house can actually use it these seats behind me the black seats at the bar you know, getting up into them and getting down out of them could be very difficult for some people. There is no reason in the world why we can't make a bar that looks like this, but has two different levels, one to stand at and one to sit at if one were sitting in a wheelchair. If you were in a wheelchair, there's no way you could sit at that island and prepare a meal, much less eat a meal. So, I mean, there are just things that we need to think about. Now, the one the one good thing that I will note, oops, up here, you see these uh, door, door pulls, well, the same down here, the pulls, all the hardware is fantastic. These are D-shaped um, hardware pieces, and that's what we recommend. So they've done that really well. I'm really happy about that. Um, so, you know, there are things that we could do differently in our homes that we just, we don't think to do. Contractors don't think to do them. They're not taught how to make things more accessible and how to build forever homes. But we can renovate and modify our homes, in many cases, to be forever homes. Now, might you have to move? Maybe it's too expensive to modify or renovate your home and you maybe need to downsize anyway. 
yeah, you can do that too. Of course you can. And you know, housing prices are pretty high everywhere. So although you can sell high, you also have to buy high. But if it means that you get to live in a place that is more accessible for you, maybe you're moving from a two or three story home to a one story and that works out better for you. I doubt very much whether you're going to find in a condo that the bathroom is the right size for a mobility device, but you know, you have to make those judgments on your own. Perhaps you can get into a, a pre-build where you can dictate a little bit more the sizes of things. So all of these things are, are judgments that you have to make. You, you know, you can look around your house and you can, you can, and you, I strongly urge you to, I, I try to avoid saying the word should because I was going to say you should, but I, I try to avoid that. When you are in your forties and fifties and you're looking at renovating your kitchen or your bathroom, why not renovate in the things that you will need 20 or 30 years down the road? And then you don't have to do it again. Frankly, when you get the choice to do it and it's your choice, you can make the design very beautiful and exactly what you want. If you have a, a traumatic event occur to you and you have to make modifications quickly, it may not turn out the way that you really want it to. Okay. Let's assume you're doing it because you choose to. How to afford it is a problem for many people. Well, you know, if you don't have the, the ability to pay for it out of pocket or from savings or investments of some kind, then you can look at alternatives like reverse mortgages, which I mentioned at the top of the show. Home Equity Bank is one such uh, provider of reverse mortgages that lets you make use of some of the equity in your home to do some of the things that you want to do. A kitchen and a bathroom renovation individually or together these are not cheap but they need to be done properly so i encourage you to do some research and see before you dive into any of this just understand what a reverse mortgage is understand the features and the benefits understand the downsides and what it means to you financially understand all of that in terms of the smaller things, you can go through your house and you can see the things that aren't working for you. Now, as it happens, I have a course coming out that will walk you through assessing your home. It should be out in a couple of months. We're finishing up the videos for it, but you can do a lot of this on your own. Move through your house intentionally and make a list of the things that don't work for you because you have to bend too far down. You have to reach too high. You have to get in an awkward position. Something hurts you like going, whoops, going into that cupboard over there on my hands and knees on a tile floor, trying to reach the, the slow cooker that's way in the back might hurt. I might have trouble getting down onto my knees and then getting back up to a standing position, holding something like a slow cooker make note of all of those things. You can put the slow cooker in a different location, but you can also modify cupboards like these back here and look at deep drawers instead of deep cupboards. When I talk about deep drawers, I'm talking about, you know, they're, they're called many names, bread drawers, pot drawers, whatever you want to call them. They are drawers that pull out that are deep that you can put things in. That's something that is starting to be a thing more and more. But if you're renovating, consider that because that will benefit you as you age and you have the need to get to things more easily. So you can do all of that. Um, I do encourage everyone to take responsibility for their own lives and to make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. Being proactive in your own life being proactive and brutally honest with yourself about the space that you live in and how it might be better, um, how it might function for you better. 
is the only way that you are going to truly understand how you can put off those in-home care services and the expense associated with it and understand whether the house that you are currently living in is the best place for you to age in place in. Now, aging in place doesn't always mean staying in the home you're in. It means aging in a place of your choosing. As I have said many times before, if you don't make the choice, someone will. Something will happen to you that means that somebody has to make a very quick decision on your behalf. It may not be the decision you want. So be proactive in your own life and you will be happier in the long run being able to make all of those choices for yourself. Until next Wednesday, take care of one another. Be well. Take care. Bye.